Hey guys, my next video, Transport Fever 2. Uh, we're going to be talking about airports, how to manage them and when to build them. Um, I have a safe game that I'm going to open up real quick and show you what I've done so far. One of the things I've learned is that creating an airport is pretty costly and pretty expensive to maintain yearly. Give this a second. All right, here we go. Here's my map. I have two sides of the map I'm working on. One of the things about the airports that you have to be aware of that do not start an airport from the beginning of the game. Um, it doesn't work well, there's not enough passengers, you lose a lot of money. So, um, as you can see here, I'm going to show you the count status here. The air, the maintenance cost is extremely expensive. Um, you know, especially when you have multiple airports um, from each of the towns or cities. One of the things I've learned is that do not start an airport in the beginning because you don't have any passengers to transport. Um, you're just going to waste a lot of money and a lot of time. So the best thing to do is look at your your graph, your growth graph. Um, there's a chart here, um, and you click on towns. This shows you a curve um, of the growth of the population, the shopping facilities, and jobs. Um, one thing you know that helps out is that the more you produce, the more you ship, the higher the jobs, the higher the population, and the higher the shopping facilities. And they actually actually um, all three are kind of symmetrical. Um, you know, they all run at the same level because they all have a relation to each other. So currently right now, um, you know, back in the night I first started about, what was it, about 80 years ago in game time, I had very minimal um, traffic, maybe a population of 15, 63. That's combined all the cities, all the towns. The more I produce with my trucking transport, my railroad transport, I was able to grow that number to up to 2161. And that's quite a bit, um, you know, com compared to what we had before. So by doing so, um, I was able to see passengers um, that showed up to my airports. Um, you know, of course, I had one airport at one time. Of course, I couldn't do anything with it. So it cost about two million a year to run. That's pretty crazy, right? So. Currently, right now, my strategy is that these airports, the big airports that allow to have the bigger aircraft, are very expensive to maintain. And you don't really need many of these, you know, especially when you have um, so many towns to support. So the best thing to do is create your your gateway um, from the south on one of the cities that you, that you feel like is the biggest. Mine was Tor um, Torrance, so I created my big airport here. And find one on the north side, of course, and figure out where you want to put your big airport. Um, I decided to go with uh, Louisville. So you can see I got a lot of airplanes coming and going. Um, one of the things I've learned recently is that you're allowed to have one terminal and have multiple lines, um, you know, multiple aircraft landing at the same terminal. The, the bad thing about that is it's going to be congested, especially if you have like a ton of airports. Um, connected to one main airport here, so you're gonna have a lot of flights coming in here, and they're gonna have to wait their chance to go ahead and dock um, at the passenger um, terminal. So what you can do to eliminate the congestion is go ahead and configure the airport, um, click on the passenger terminal, and just sit the building anywhere you like around the airport. There's a grid mark here, so anything that actually snaps in place may be kind of pricey but that allows you to create another terminal and by doing so it will separate some of the lines and create um, uh, more of a efficient way of managing the two terminals separately so you don't have to see um, you know all this congestion hitting one of the terminals you could actually have two terminals that could be easily um, controlled and managed and you won't have any backups here especially um, when you have like every aircraft you can see here coming into the terminal because all these airports here are actually heading into the main airport here. So after doing that, um, 
I created another big airport on the north side that allowed me to fly passengers from the north to the south. Um, I actually use a big aircraft for that because there's a lot more people that want to come down here and also go come up here. Then all the towns um, for all the other cities, I created the airfields. So that allowed me to go ahead and keep the cost down. And, and if they want to fly to the south, they would have to fly to Louisville for them to get down to Torrance. And the aircraft I, I first started um, that was, you know, low cost was this short 330C, C23 Sherpa. Great aircraft, it's enough to get from an airfield to an airfield. Um, it's nothing fancy, but it's, you know, you can see the maintenance is a lot lower than some of, the, some of these other jets that you see below here. Um, the aircraft that I have coming from the south to the north is the Bombardier Q400. A little bit more expensive, but I can hold 22 people. And it's much faster. Now keep note, the emissions are very important. Uh, this is 83, this one is 84. Um, the emissions is like the carbon um, output that these planes uh, produce, especially the trucks and the trains. Uh, you'll have a, a, an issue with growth if you go too high. Now for some reason, if you don't repair it, on your maintenance level, um, if you don't have enough budget to repair it on a yearly basis, the emissions will start going up. And especially if you have a plane that needs to be replaced uh, past its lifespan, it's going to go up a lot higher. So you always have to replace them um, every so often, and you have to make sure you maintain them uh, because if not, your emissions will go out of control. Now, some of the more efficient planes, um, like the Airbus 320, um, or you know, maybe um, something at this level may show a little bit more of a decrease in emissions, but you want to maintain, um, you know, no more than 85. I think it's good to start out with uh, because you have to manage your trucks, you know, and you have to manage all your other vehicles. So, as you can see here, um, I'm going to show you this of my vehicles here. Missions are could go from 63 to highest 88. Uh, condition could go from be, uh, very bad to very good. So once you get to the bad level, you'll start seeing an increase in emission. The age is old. The lifespan is almost up to its full uh, lifespan. So you may want to consider, um, especially when you get to the bad or very bad, replace them because your emissions will go up. Your growth of your cities will go down especially if they're in the same zone where your cities are. So this is just a quick video of managing multiple airports. Um, like I said, do not start an airport from the scratch. Create growth through cities. Start with trucking um, transports to the rail transports. Then once you have a good growth, you can start seeing construction being built. That's when you could probably plan on building an aircraft, um, I'm sorry, building an air, um, airport. And like I said, do not put big airports in every town, every city, just because the maintenance costs could be very, very, very expensive um, for the maintenance of the infrastructure. So just do one big one on the bottom with multiple airfields and do the same on the north side and use one nice aircraft that can fly fly from south to north. This is one route. You don't need multiple routes um, unless you have the demand and the supply of passengers. Um, but to start slow, and I think you should be able to manage that. Um, you know, good for that. So thank you for um, for listening to my video of managing multiple airports, um, and have a good one.